A few weeks ago we looked at some pizza tomatel, so I thought this week it'd be only fair to look at some pizza tomatin as well, because that's that's a mistake I made a few weeks ago and someone was very kind to correct me. I'm not sure if they meant to be kind, but it was meant kindly, or it was taken kindly anyway, so thank you person that corrected me. You bastard. Hello there everyone and welcome to John Drinks, the channel where I, John, have a drink and today we're going to be looking at the first of two expressions, just double check I got the right one, I didn't. Uh, this is a sample of Kubokan, uh, and not Kubokan as I may have made the mistake of in the past. <clears throat> we learn. Uh, this is part of their creation series um, and I stumbled upon this purely by accident about two years ago. Um, Kabokin, for those that don't know, uh, it's sort of the Peter Tomatin range. Um, and they weren't really particularly well received, I think it's safe to say. They were kind of like, you know, background notes, similar to kind of like the old Bal and True, and it's not the thing that people necessarily think of first when they think of Tomatin. Um, so I was working in a whiskey bar at the time, and we had some Kabokin on the bar, and we finally got rid of the last drag, and then we were like, okay, cool, we'll get another bottle in. Uh, and it had been there for so long that they were like, oh yeah, we don't, we don't have that edition of it anymore, but we do have a new version of it. And I was like, I fuck it, whatever, it's just going to sit there, whatever. And the new edition came in the new packaging, we were like, oh, she's cute. And then we opened it, and we were blown away by the whiskey inside. Um, they they hit the ground hard on this one and they did their work because, I mean, I already know the contents of this is fantastic. So, I mean, if you needed, like, an edited version or, like, you know, you need to go, like, do the washing up or something, this is banging stuff. Um, but for those that want to stick around and listen to my dulcet tones and admire the new fairy lights, because the old ones blew up for some reason, don't ask, then, then stick around. Um, so we got this in, and it we got through the bottle in about two weeks. Because um, what happened was, the day that we got it in, somebody finished work, and they were like, I'll tell you what, I'll try the new stuff. And we all tried like a little nip out of the glass. They were different days. And we were all like, holy shit, that's really fucking nice. Um, and every time somebody wanted a recommendation, we were like, well, do you know what, we just got this in, and it just flew off the shelf. Uh, we had the bottle for like, I think three weeks in total. Um, I need to get another one in actually at some point because they still they still sell it. Um, would recommend. So this is their Creations one, and it is finished in its stout and Moscatel casks. There is actually hang about. Oh, do you know I got the research on my phone and I was like I bet I can remember and then I was like, now nah, that ain't happening. Uh, Black Isle Brewery Imperial Stout and uh oh, Bucklehoa. It's got like an accent over the O and being an Englishman, we don't have that stuff. We have live and live, you know, same word, different meanings, but uh, Moscatel de S oh no, Setebal. I'm saying that wrong. I'm just going to jank it. Setebal wine casks. An intriguing balance of big chocolatey beer notes and rich fruity wine, all backed up with lightly peated single malts. Uh, Master Malt says should be fascinating stuff. It is indeed fascinating stuff. We're going to crack it open now. Well, I'm going to crack it open. You're just going to kind of sit there, lie there. You might be having a shit while you're watching this. I don't fucking know. Um, I'm breaking with convention with me today. I'm having it in a tumbler. Um, just because I, I fancy to change, you know. Glassware's fun. Um, you can experiment around with glassware. We've talked about the differences that glassware make in how you perceive whiskey. Um, that video will be kicking around somewhere. It's a little old now, but I still stand by it. It's a decent video. <laughs> so, also I've got sniffles because um, I was cuddling Mo before I started making this video. A couple of people have been asking, where's where's Mo? Uh, I think they've been like on tender hooks in case he's died. He's fine. He's just not made an appearance for a while. That's all. He's he's alive and well. He's still being grey and sassy. Don't worry about it. Mo. Oh, I forgot he's not a dog. I mean, the initial the initial nose that I'm getting out of this is quite fruity. But from what memory serves of this, the flavour of it is quite different. But, first impressions, there's a little fusile, and then you you do start getting kind of like a dairy milk, rich, chocolatey kind of a, a nose coming through. And that's a tasting note that's going to be sticking around, believe you me. A little bit like white grape in there as well. It's sweet, but it's got like kind of like a low acidity fruitiness to it. 
There's no herbal notes. The peat is just barely detectable. Just barely. It's kind of like if you if you opened a smoked German beer. I mean, there are other smoked beers around, but let's face it, they're kind of the best. Um, and you had a party and the bottle was like still on your table for a couple of days because you're an animal. And it was just kind of like faintly pervading into the room. It's that kind of like weak peat kind of note. It's not overwhelming. If you want to get someone introduced to peat, actually, very good option. The problem with the crystal as well, I, I don't get the normal ding. The, the, that's no fun. But it looks pretty, so... If I'm completely honest, the reason why I'm drinking out of this is that I've recently watched Deep Breath with my boyfriend and Peter Capaldi pours himself and the half face man a drink out of crystal glasses like this, and I'm, I'm very suggestible like that. As time goes on, there's a little bit of like a melon component coming through as well. There's a freshness to it, kind of vibing with the chocolatey sweet notes. It's a touch caramel and biscuit, not overwhelmingly so. And the grapes just staying around. It's, it just reminds me of like dairy milk buttons. That's the, that's the smell I get off of that. I, I was addicted to those as a kid. I know it's just dairy milk in a different shape, but there's something about that button shape. It just, just hits it and it just hits the right note of... I don't know what I'm saying. What am I saying? <laughs> I don't know. It's as I remember, it's dairy milk in a glass, man. Uh, 46%. I don't have details on you about chill filtration and natural colour. If memory serves, I think they're quite well behaved on this one, but I'll update the scorecard down below so you'll be able to see if they are or aren't, because um, I'm bad at researching. My university days are behind me, man. There's a lovely kind of like Yorkie milk chocolate kind of a thing going on. There's raisin. There's a little bit of like a nice biscuit, There's like a coconutty biscuity kind of a kind of a thing going on. I do get like a little bit of melt, like honeydew melon. Sorry, fat, like people that are against honeydew melon. I know it's a controversial melon family, apparently. Um, but yeah, getting a bit of that, a little bit of like uh, sort of a tangerine kind of a sweetness. There's going to be people out there that's like, why don't you just say orange? Because they do taste different. All right. And I will fight you on this. They do taste different. All right. Just because they're an orange shaped citrus fruit does not mean they all taste exactly the same. Pomelos look a lot like grapefruits. Don't look, they don't taste the same. So there. Marmalade oranges, they look the same as normal oranges. They do not taste the same. How did we get onto this rant? Jesus. It needs a little time in the glass, which I've not given it. Because um, it is a little bit aggressive on the first nip. But I'm going to stick a little bit of water in it and see if we can uh, mellow the beast a little bit. Still in love with the jug, but I'm not going to keep going on about it. Thumbs up if you like the antique granny jug that I've got for words. <laughs> Fucking hell, I'm rubbish at this, aren't I? Right. With the tickle of water, it, it mellows it out quite a bit in terms of both sort of the nasal capacity, certainly. It's, um, it's much gentler. It's almost got kind of like a... like cookies out of the oven kind of a smell to it. It's, it's comforting and sweet, but it's it's more sort of a blanket of general sense, if that makes sense, rather than kind of like a bam, bam, bam. Uh, the fruit components from before have kind of gone away now, really. It's more uh, sort of a sweet, sugary, baked goods kind of a nose on it. It's not a bad nose, to be fair, but a lot of that more fruity complexity has gone away, and in its place it's just kind of more of a... I suppose you would call it approachable nose? I'm trying to find the grapes. They've they've completely left the building. They are they are gone, pal. It's a... It's a brown sugar, bourbon vanilla kind of a thing going on. A bit of bourbon biscuit, perhaps? There's like a chocolatey kind of a thing still going on in there. I think that's what I was stumbling towards with like the cookies out the oven thing. God, there's no wonder they didn't pick me for the Osbos, the crap I talk. Do you know, it's a tasty note from earlier, and it was a little bit tongue-in-cheek, but I'm going to double down on it. The Nice Biscuit thing has kind of, like, really come to life in it. There is a lovely coconutty, vanillary, baked good kind of an element about it, which I'm really digging. It's kind of sweet and sugary, kind of biscuity, kind of coconutty, and that kind of, like, weird coconut flavour that Nice Biscuits have that a coconut doesn't really have. Also, they're pronounced Nice Biscuits, and they are nice. 
fight me. That dairy milk chocolate is coming through. Loads of just beautiful, rich, comforting milk chocolate. It's really approachable, this one. Um, it's a lovely one. The pea is, there's like a tingle. There's like a tingle of something in the background, but it's not overwhelming. It's not grab you on the floor and start punching in the face kind of pea. It's there almost like there's a back note to complement the whiskey. It's not terribly fruity. There is kind of like a, a rich kind of Weetabix and sugar kind of a flavour going on. Um, really, I'm getting Nice biscuits off of it now. I don't know if I've just put it in my head. It's entirely possible. Because we humans, we are suggestible. We're very fucking suggestible. Um, I recently found out there are certain stores, uh, Sony stores in America, they pump out like mandarin scents because it's a comforting aroma and it gets you in the mood to buy things and when you're in that environment you're gonna put down some cash you know what I'm saying it's a fucking Sony store um that is sinister <laughs> but I mean you know if you get something in your head sometimes it can really influence you maybe I just need a packet of Nice biscuits and all will be well I don't know is the finishers themselves aren't pronounced it's not like you're talking about like a Sautern finish here and you're like, oh, I'm really detecting like the sweetness of the Sautern, you know? I'm not getting kind of like the... I mean, I'm getting chocolatiness fruit, which I'm assuming is coming from the stout, and I'm getting some fruity components, which I assume is coming from the Moscatel, but it's not like I'm sitting here be like, oh, that's what that is. It's, it's working more as a cohesive whole rather than a like, bam, I'm center stage, now bam, I'm, you know, no one's fighting for attention. It's all melded together, which I quite like about it to be honest it's not it's not all trying to like hog the limelight because sometimes you can have that with like multiple finishes where like it's jarring it crashes against each other um and this isn't that this is just kind of like yeah we're always good we're pretty good do you like nice biscuits nice biscuits you're gonna like me I am tempted, actually, because I do have the, um, let's just clear the crap that I've got on top of it here. I, I do still have my biscuit book, so, I mean, we could... I wonder what they've got to say about Nice Biscuits. Let's pad this out a little bit. Yeah, why not? Um, oh, where am I going to find you? I'm going to run out of memory card, aren't I? Hang on. Where's the glossary here? Also, I would totally have that as just, like, wallpaper in, like, my personal library. Because, you know... That's something I'm going to totally have when I'm older. Oh, there isn't a glossary. Oh, no. Is there a contents? Kind of. Shortcake. I would assume it's in shortcake. Speak amongst yourselves for a minute. 57. No. No. Ooh, Lincolns. I forgot you existed. No. 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 Wouldn't be an oats, hobnobs, custard cream, that's a sandwich, jam, there's no jam in Nice, marshmallow. Does this not have an entry for Nice biscuits? What is going on here? Garibaldi, you can't have a Garibaldi and not have a Nice, surely. Fruit shortcake, ice gems, wafers, it's not a wafer. Tonics, chocolate covered, it's not chocolate covered. Foreign, <laughs> it's called Nice, I suppose, but Oreo, Pocky's in here. A nice biscuit isn't in here. Well, that's insulting. Um, yeah. This is really nice. I'm big into this. At some point, which will not be today, I'll get into the Creations 2 and say Shukju and Virgin Oak Cask. I've not tried that one before, so I'm keen to see how that one does against this one. But this is a banging one. Um, really enjoy it. I think it's a lovely sort of entry whiskey which is where we come to a problem because the price is not exactly what you call the most accessible um you can get objectively better whiskey for the price that you're going to pay for this i'm just putting it out there um i do really enjoy this dram i think it's fantastic it is a no age statement there are other things that you can get for your money for i mean either comparable money or in some cases cheaper um, so that's worth considering with this one. Price is always a factor with these things. Nevertheless, I would buy it. Might have to wait for it to be on offer. <laughs> Which I don't like doing too often, but I mean, you know, we're all looking after our pennies at the minute. Because, you know, petrol's about to go up. Uh, 
I know I did the right thing 10 years ago when I decided not to learn to drive. Also, I'm shit at driving, so you're welcome. Comment down below. What do you think about the Nice Biscuit? That's it. Thumb this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you aren't already and you want to see more shenanigans about a barely stable man talking about whiskey and other spirits. Got this recently, actually. Um, ooh! Uh, one of the senior bosses in my work is a fan of this channel. I don't know how I'm still employed either. I genuinely don't. Um, and he's very keen for me to try this at some point. Um, I've had Yenova before. And I think this one's like a new spin on it, despite being called Old Duff. I don't know, I haven't done enough research on this yet, so I'd need to check it out a bit more. But the bottle's cute, if nothing else. So I'll be getting around to getting around to some Jennifer at some point, so that'll be a bit of fun. But for now though, thank you very much for watching, and do join me next time where I'll be drinking something else. Mm -hmm.